So your Ryzen 7 5800X is extremely hot, right? Let's fix that problem or at least try to fix that problem. So we're gonna go into the bias of your motherboard. So I am using this motherboard, the ROG Strix B550F Gaming. I quickly want to give a shout out to my friend, Joey Blazed. We've been friends on YouTube. We've been following each other for since around 2011. He started a live streaming on Twitch. Guys, please go show some love and support to my friend, Joey Blaze. If this video was helpful to you, don't forget to smash the like, share with your friends that are having this similar issue, and don't forget to subscribe, it's free anyways. All right guys, let's get to it now. All right, let's begin. Go ahead and restart your computer and hit the delete button to go into your bias. Once prompted into your bias, press F5 to reset the motherboard settings to default. Next, press F7 to be taken to the advanced mode in the bias. Click on the AI tweaker tab. What we want to do is lower the core voltage and the core speeds. If you notice by default, this processor turbo boosts itself to nearly 4.7 GHz at 1.472 in the core voltage. This processor is a monster for overclocking but we suffer the penalty of the high temperatures. Okay, so click on the AI Overclock Tuner and change it to the OCP. The next thing we want to change is the CPU core ratio. We will change it from auto to manual. I am using 40 times because I still want to have a little bit of an overclock. So 40 times 100 on the base clock will give me 4000 megahertz or 4.0 gigahertz. The next thing we want to change is the CPU voltage. Change it from auto to manual. I am changing mine from 1.472 to 1.3. Remember, the higher the core voltage, the higher the temperatures. Once you are done, press F10 to go back to Windows. Hey guys, I quickly wanted to add, I also did uh, a different type of overclocking. I went to 4.4, all right? So it's running at 4,400 megahertz from 4,000 to 4,400. And I lower, instead of increasing, I went from 1.3 to 1.2 in the core voltage, you can see here on the screen. And I am getting a stable overclock. So, I'm actually really impressed because nowadays overclocking used to be about increasing the core or actually keeping the core voltage low and increasing the core clock and sometimes that would crash. Now there are these uh, videos out there on YouTube by different uh, people who are trying to lower the temps of the 5800X and I've tried their methods but it doesn't really work for me. I am old school and I like to go into the main source of, you know, I like to go into the bias. I don't want to be using third parties or something new that I haven't tested yet, like that, uh, that setting on AMD overclocking. You know, I tried it, but it didn't work for me. Uh, I wasn't too happy with it. Uh, it crashed on me once. I, I followed this one setting from this guy. And so I just went into the main source, so, something that I already know. That's how I learned how to overclock. So. This is incredible. Well, actually this is like backwards now because before it was to increase the core clock and reduce or keep the voltage or increase it as it needed it. But, not, but, but this time I went from 1.475 volts in the core, I went down to 1.2. And at first I did 4,000 because I, I didn't want to risk it going too low and too high. And I went and I increased it again to 44 now because I still want to have that overclock 
and I lower the voltage to 1.25. I've already said that several times, so I'll just stop saying it. But like I said, it's incredible. It, I am amazed. I'm seriously amazed. This processor, this technology, it, it's beautiful. I love it. Another thing that I wanted to add, I do have custom water cooling, all right? And I keep my room around 70 to 75 room temperature, so I don't let my room get too hot. I have an AC unit right above the computer, so that helps sometimes. And now we're entering the, the winter day, so we're in fall now, so it's, it's beautiful, it's gonna help. But I don't wanna recommend it, but I would suggest if you wanna have like crazy overclocks or mess around with overclocks, try to get maybe like a custom cooling, maybe two 140 millimeter radiators. I have a 360 and a 240, only for this chip. Since I removed my uh, GTX 1080, it's not being water cooled anymore. I'm using the stud cooler for this one. And when I get the, the water cooling plate for this uh, graphics card, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a separate loop for it. I don't want them mixing together because I want my low temps. PC Master Race, baby. All right, guys, so that's the only thing that I wanted to add. Um, test your, try to lower the core voltage. That is what is going to reduce the temperatures. I went from 56 at 1.3 volt and I increased the core voltage, like I said, so I didn't keep it at four. I do like to overclock, so that is why I'm staying at 4.4, 4400 megahertz. I love that and I love the fact that I was able to keep or I'm able to keep my temps, I mean, my core voltage low, so. I'm talking a lot right now anyways. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope that the video helped you. Please leave your thoughts, your comments down below. Please share your scores. Uh, this video, it's not benchmark video and numbers. This is mostly gaming performance and lower the temperatures to see how low I can get them. All right, guys, this was your host, Sergio Takeover Clock. I'm probably going to be doing another video, doing some benchmarks using probably Prime 95 and uh, some of the other benchmarks to try and get those numbers for you guys. So stay tuned, stay beautiful. Don't forget to check out my friend, Joey Blaze. I'll see you guys next time.